All right, finally, here's a fun one. Let's drop down another GeoSub, dive in there, and in here, let's start with a curve. And let's just click the tool handle, and let's just draw a basic curve. And full disclaimer, I got this technique and this wonderful output it produces from the fantastic guys at the um, Houdini Beta Forum. Thanks a lot, guys. Really helpful forum, really friendly, really productive, a great place to be. So we dropped a curve here. Let's resample that. Let's resample it as a subdivision curve. Let's check on point density. Well, that's a bit too much. So let's increase the resample length like this. And next, what I like to do is I like to copy this curve, just this time using the standard copy and transform, I'm not setting up any transforms at all, just copying this curve onto itself, basically. Let's make 10 copies. Next, what I'd like to do is I'd like to offset each of those curve points a bit differently, depending on which curve they belong to. And there are multiple ways how you could do that. In my case, I'll just abuse a point wrangle for that. And the first thing I want to do is check to which primitive each point belongs to. So let's call this array P's for primitives. And let's use a function called point prims. I want to get the info from my first slot. That's the one with the ID zero. And I want to check for my point with the current PT number, the current point number. Then I'll just grab the first result here. That is my primitive where the point is on. So now I'm going to use this to drive a simplex noise to generate a vector. Let's call it offset equals to a simplex noise. And I want to sample this noise at our current point position plus a vector that I'll build out of my primitive number here. So depending on which primitives we are, we offset the noise. Let's just try this here. And then from this vector, which ranges in between 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1, let's subtract 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.5. So it can point to both directions. And finally, let's add this vector to our current point position like this. And that did not really work. So let's check what's going on here. I'm not sure if I found a bug here, but what I did is was just I cut out this vector that I'm subtracting here and then repasted it and suddenly it worked. So maybe that'll be fixed until final release. Let's see. Okay, so what I have here is just basically a bunch of curves. And when I drop down a wireframe, and let's reduce the radius a tiny bit, wire this in here, highlight it, I can see well, those lines are partially intersecting. For example, here or here, they're just sticking into each other or here. And I don't want that. And luckily, Houdini's got a solution. And it's part of the Vellum toolkit. And it's called the detangle. And for the detangle node to work, what I first need is a rest position with my original curve position here. And let's wire that into the detangle sop here and highlight it. And in here, it wants the previous position specified. And we're going to use the rest position as a previous position. And you can see this changes the positions of the individual curve points a bit. So let's highlight that wire and wire in the detangled version of that. And you see it's gotten a bit better, but it's not fully resolved all those intersections here. That is because this thing needs to run multiple iterations. So let's do that using a for loop with feedback. And we'll just wire in the rest position here, put in the detangle in between here and wire the output into our wireframe here. And we can see now with 10 iterations, or maybe let's increase them to say 32, those collisions get gradually resolved better and better. So coming from this, we went to this, which of course has some jaggies in there. So instead, let's drop down the resample again, set this one to resample as a subdivision curve and wide in between the repeat end and the wire node like this. And we now have those smoothed cables curves running along here. Maybe it needs a bit more subdivisions like this. And let's look at it without the wireframes. So like this, this is the result of multiple iterations of the detangler. So very, very simple cable management for non intersecting cables in your scene. Very fun note, I think, and one that yields many possibilities of how to use and how to abuse it. All right, this was the short overview of what's in with Vellum in Houdini 17. It's by no means comprehensive. And if you want to dive deeper into what 
PBDs are, position-based dynamics, how to use them, how to abuse them, how to set them up manually, and how to work with the standard grains and with vellum in Houdini, there might be something coming up very soon on our Patreon. With that being said, thanks so much, guys. And a very, very special thank you goes out to all of our Patreons. Especially Kiyoko Sakane, Martin Ögren, Joseph Howerton, Nick Nick, Chris Hebert, Refik Anadol, Rob Bryant Jr., and Mohamed Alabri. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you enjoy exploring Houdini 17 as much as I do, and I'm very much looking forward to the artwork you guys create with this new version of Houdini. So, it's cheers and goodbye.